Okay, the Canadian Coalition for Farm Animals. Uh, I'm speaking to... Lynn Cavanaugh. Okay, tell me more about this. It's kind of new to me. Why should there be a coalition for farm animals? Now you got Save the Whale, Save This, and everything else, but why... Well, in factory farming, is there's a lot of cruelties associated with the way animals are raised for food today in the world and in Canada. Um, for example, it's um, legal to transport farm animals for 50 to, for cattle, sorry, for 52 hours without food, water, or rest. Why is that? There's a picture actually here showing that. Why is that? Well, the legislation is old and it's outdated, and it really has to do a lot to do with the geography. Canada is a big country, and it's an economic reason. Um, you know, animals. Cattle might be raised in the prairies, for example, and then shipped to slaughter or to feed lots in another part of the country. So it's really an industry, um, an industry favorable initiative, and it's economic. And it's, so it's in, in the industry's favor. Animal welfare isn't a consideration. Um, so that's why the, the laws are what they are. It's also legal to transport pigs, poultry, and horses for 36 hours without food, water, or rest. So what we're trying to do is educate the public. Like do some outreach around factory farming issues um, intent or intense agriculture issues and um, hopefully make some changes legally with the transport laws, for example. Our other campaigns are around battery cages for egg laying hens. So um, eggs are produced from hens that are kept in, um, in, in cages that are stacked in tiers and there's about five to seven hens a cage and they have less space than an eight and a half by 11 sheet of paper and they're in those cages for one year of their life. Okay, so let's stop there. How do you enforce all this? And for, um, like, for example, you know, how do you know the transporting cattle and sheep that have, you know, 52 hours with water, food, or rest? How do you enforce that? Well, that's a complicated thing. You know, we hope that um, with the, the legislative changes in terms of reduction of transport times, that there will also be other changes. For, so, so the transport laws are governed by the Canadian Food Inspection Agency, and we hope that um, they will also increase the enforcement and inspection. So inspecting trucks along the way, inspecting the animals when they get to slaughter so that they can see the conditions that they're in, so that that'll give a sense about how they were transported. And how, um, yeah. I don't think actually people who leave this hand, it actually says it is legal to transport the sheep, the, the cattle, and the goats for 52 hours without food, water, or rest. That's actually legal. It's absolutely legal. It's in the um, Health and um, the Health of Animals Act, which is governed by the Canadian Food Inspection Agency. Um, that's the law. I mean, there are other issues with transport as well. I mean, there's um, there's no rules around density, so the trucks can be very crowded in the hot summer months. For example, the pigs will go down. What's called um, going down or downer, where they collapse from heat stress. Some might even have a heart attack and die. This is considered normal in the industry. They call them production losses, DOAs, dead on arrivals at the slaughter plant. Um, so not only do we want the reduction in the transport times, we want to see better handling, we want to see better ventilation, rules around density on the trucks, driver training, and you mentioned enforcement. Better enforcement and better um, fines for violations of the laws. So you think they're really going to care because first of all, a lot of people, the whole slaughterhouse business, is they really don't care. They just slaughter them. It's very humane. Even those that are, you know, kosher and hell, I've seen videos where it isn't the case. And yet people, there's no, people aren't making a difference. How do you, how can you well, change that? Well, we chip away. You're right. It's really, it's a real challenge. I mean, we've this worked part of for that many cycle. years trying to lobby the government and educate consumers and write to members of parliament and, and meet with government officials. And for all that effort, we might see some small changes, but, you know, we so, we can't be apathetic. We can't, the, the alternative is to do nothing. You know, we have to raise awareness around these issues, and hopefully um, there will be less support for the way if people don't adopt a vegetarian or vegan diet, which would be great, because then they're not supporting the industry. But in the meantime, we also need some, we need some laws to protect these animals that are suffering in these industrialized farms, in transport, in slaughter. Yeah. I mean, were they going to get more diseases when they're shipped without water, food, or rest for 52 hours? Does that happen? Well, you know, I'm not an expert in that, but there are issues around, um, you know, like for example, if the animals are crowded and they're stressed, they can they can shed more pathogens. There's been studies around that. Um, there was a recent um, egg recall in the U.S. 
because um, the cage tents were showing were shutting salmonella in two major egg producing companies, big huge factory egg producing companies in the U.S. Related to the fact that the animals were caged in these unhealthy, unsanitary, inhumane conditions. Yeah. Your website again is. It's www.humanefood.ca. Almost human food. <laughs> Humanefood.ca, Canadian Coalition for Environmental. Humanity. Excellent. Well, do you have a target date to make a significant change? You know, the, um, in terms of transport? Yes. The, it's been going on for a number of years, not just our organization. How many years has this been going on? Oh, without the CFIA has change. been talking over five years, five maybe years. ten years, that they're, to, they're making regula uh, regulatory changes. But there have been um, some more significant happenings, if you will. I mean, uh, the, uh, uh, an organization we work with, World Society for Protection of Animals, just came out with a great report on transport showing how terrible it is by reviewing the inspection reports from the Canadian Food Inspection Agency. Um, we have a petition going that a number of member of parliament, members of parliament have read in the House. So we're hoping that after all these years of talking about the CFIA will um, you know, publish new regulations that are in favor of improved animal welfare, but we don't know when they're going to come out with. I want to ask you a question. Yeah. What's this a picture of? Okay, sorry.